are. My name is uh, Dave Cahill, and uh, we have Kevin Armour from Paycor and, and shortly Brendan Voge from HP joining us. And we wanted to really, uh, Kevin, uh, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Uh, and wanted to walk through, uh, first of all, your business, and then kind of take us through a little bit of a, of a journey, a, a case study through your experiences and uh, you. in your IT department, where it's at, some of the uh, challenges you've experienced, and, and where you're going, and and, and how HP fits in that story. So um, I think it would be great if you tell us at least initially w about Paycor, uh, what your core competence is, your focus, and, and kind of your early IT experiences or IT department. Okay. Paycor is a payroll, HR, tax, time and attendance, software as a service provider. We're located in Cincinnati, Ohio. We've uh, been there since 1992. Bob Coughlin opened the office in 1992 and is a privately owned company. Um, we have 500 employees, 80 in IT. Our biggest challenge is really um, being able to provide customer service for our clients as far as one-on-one -on -one customer service and instant response. We're hearing a lot here at HP Discover about instant on. Our, our mantra is, is really instant response and being able to provide instant information to our clients, to our specialists that are processing payrolls, HR information, time and attendance, and things like that. So you guys have been, I mean, you guys have been doing SaaS before it was SaaS, right? right I mean, right. you guys were in ASP when ASP was a good thing, and then it was a bad thing. Right. And now it's a good thing again. Yeah. So talk about that journey, right? I mean, where, where, where are you, and, and what have you learned over those, those few years to get us to we here? We learned that we were an early cloud provider, and nobody knew anything about the cloud. We didn't know we were a cloud, but yeah, we were an ASP application service provider. We provide our applications uh, to our clients. They need no IT infrastructure. So as far as the, the migration, a lot of the um, things that we're seeing today, virtualization, we're a 90% virtualized shop. Our SQL enterprise is, is the only thing that really isn't virtualized in our environment just because of the SQL server needs and and just the, the ability to scale up our SQL enterprise. And, and so what's different today that, that makes this, this cloud concept a reality? I mean, besides just hardware costs coming down 30% a year for the last 10 years, right? Is it, is it virtualization? Is it pure compute? I mean, what is, what is driving the, the cloud agenda that makes this that much better and has everyone you know, form, or, or wrapping their business around this I trend? I think so, some of it is taking the, the business that you're in and, and focusing on that aspect and, and not focusing on things like email, HR, payroll. If your business is manufacturing, you really want your IT staff focused on the infrastructure needed to support what you're making your money in versus the HR and payroll. We provide that and and that's really what I see as the cloud is being able to, to do that, but also the instant, the ability to spin up servers quickly, the, the, the rapidness, the elasticity of being able to provide more compute power quickly, and those are really some of the driving forces to the cloud right now. And, and what does that look like? How do you, it, it's primarily pr private cloud. Right, ours is well, private cloud. It's a fairly nebulous term, right. but it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's virtualized today, 90%, <laughs> right. right? What's the next phase in, in that down the path towards uh, public or hybrid? And, and how do you get there from here? Yeah, I think uh, some of the things that we look at is uh, we spin up new servers when we need to within our web farm, and the ability to spin up servers in a, in a hybrid solution is something that we're really looking at from a cost perspective and from the ease of being able to spin them up uh, rapidly. So, But we're, we're still looking at more of a hybrid solution because of our dependency on our SQL database server. That's really the hard the, the core of our IT infrastructure is being able to provide that instant uh, responsiveness, the, the ability to, to process payrolls quickly, HR information, and really be able to get the information to the clients quickly. And when you have a new uh, demand for an application, and one of, your, uh, one of the guys in the IT team comes in, you know, the government CIO has said we have a cloud first mandate. Right. Every app that comes in the door is cloud first and you gotta tell me a reason why it's not. Yeah. What does it look like internally at Paycor? Uh, internally we, we cost it out in both uh, you know, situations, a new application or a new environment. 
and really look at it from a cost perspective to see if it really makes sense two, three years out. Maybe initially it might make sense, but if, if you're there two, three, four years, you need to really look at the, the overall cost of the recurring revenue model versus buying the servers and, and the license that go into that because in most cases you're still buying for the you're still buying all those licenses and, and everything within that that structure of how the cloud is being marketed or or provided. Right. So it's not just a wholehearted jump to the private cloud. It's right. I be... mean I don't see it that way. It's it's there's a lot there. There's a lot of care and feeding. There's a lot of um, being able to also make sure that you have the the backup capacity, the thing, you know, yeah, there, there's ways that they, the cloud providers can move servers from one environment to the other, but you still need to take those hardcore IT um, services and make sure that you're adhering to those within the cloud environment too, because they're you still have those same type of issues. Right, the cloud's not magic. Exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, independent of the technology, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's just a political, cultural, organizational inertia that exists in, in getting, you know, towards this cloud mindset. Do you, guys, do you guys see any of that? I mean, you've been doing SaaS for a while, so there is a, a, as a service mindset internally, but how do you get around that? Because I see that as one of the biggest gaps from getting towards kind of existing IT to this next generation of IT, which is much more as a service. Getting around what, I mean. The, 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 the mindset inertia. So, I mean, guys, you know, what is cloud? Or resisting yeah. that move to cloud versus how I, they've done things previously. I, I think we look at it as we've provided the cloud solution so we understand a lot of the virtualization and how to do some of those things. So being able to, to look at that as a whole is really where we're driving. And so, Brendan, when you're talking to Kevin and helping bridge, bring HP and interject HP into the discussion, wh where do you guys have the most impact? Where is the HP architecture, HP technology, HP processes software? How does that weave into Paycor to make sense for them where it's so compelling that, that, that they're coming to you to solve their problems? Well, specifically, I'm the system architect for the DL980, and I think it's, you know, that's been a really interesting alternative for Kevin in terms of looking for very high performance solutions at very low cost extend the x86 per line, line beyond the current four socket industry standard servers into something that's considerably larger and really more appropriate for an SQL kind of application. Yeah. And so what is the, as you look, uh, Kevin, at your, the, the, the problems or, or the, the kind of next phases for you, what are the biggest issues in your environment that you need to, to address from here? Right, and where, where does HP fit into that story? Um, HP fits in with, with just the, the rapid uh, nature of how they're coming out with new servers all the time and, and us being able to upgrade to the, to the latest and greatest as far as that goes, getting the, the added capacity that we need as we grow. We're, we're doubling revenue every th three years, so we, we're, we're a very growth-oriented company, so we need to be able to grow our IT infrastructure as the company continues to grow too. And, and then IT-wise, I mean, what are the biggest, uh, is it really just figuring out how to meet those growth needs that you, when you wake up every day and in the big challenges you're facing, it's around sustaining or harnessing that growth? Some of it's the growth, but really the, the biggest concerns are around security and, and our infrastructure as far as the security goes. I mean, the, the whole uh, environment, just making sure the lights are on 24 seven, the, the expectation used to, you know, when we first started out, the, it wasn't a 24 by seven, 365, world you know now it's everything instant everything has to be there on and and continually uh, being able to process and, and where's the biggest IT headache at this point I mean everyone talks about operations being 70 to 80 percent of the cost of, of IT spend right where is your biggest headaches probably the resource allocation as far as all the projects we have on our plate the things we want to do where we want to go as as we grow our company really being able to do that and and manage both the new products that we're bringing out and then manage the the infrastructure and the things that need to be done to to keep things up and running smoothly Right, and then figuring out where, where HP can fit in from, right. a, from a software standpoint, right. software, hardware. Software, hardware. I mean, we've been an HP customer for all the years I've been there, uh, dating back 15 years. I mean, we've really been a HP ProLiant customer, so we continually see the benefits that they provide us. 
And, and then, uh, you know, extending to the desktop a bit, talk about the, the desktop virtualization strategy and also thin client. I mean, it feels like you guys have uh, multiple options there depending on the on the use case or the customer yeah, profile. Right now, we're, we're looking at the Citrix Zen app environment and both the uh, VMware environment also as far as a, more of a virtualized application streaming model. Right now, we're a pretty heavy uh, Citrix shop as far as a published application goes. So the Zen server... Uh, as far as publishing applications, we have a processing center in Jacksonville and a processing center in Kansas City that is really just a wise terminal uh, environment, that very thin client, so no IT needs there really, so being able to do that. But really trying to figure out at this point which one makes the most sense for us moving forward. Since we are very heavy into VMware from our server virtualization, just really looking at both products now to figure out which is best for us. So you're 90% virtualized on the server side. Correct. You're, you know, certainly have a percentage on Zen App or, or Wise, thin clients Correct. on the desktop side. Uh, and all of that is really in kind of internally, on-premise right. type solutions. H how do you think about bursting, overdrafting, getting to the to public cloud? Is that something you can see yourself doing or is this, is the proposition, you know, still too too well, you know, it's too easy for you to keep it inside, and the, and the math I think, doesn't I think at times it is easy for us to keep it inside because we've kept it inside, but we, we are actively looking at how we can utilize the cloud to burst, to, to be able to utilize some of the services from a, not having to have them up 24-7, but to be able to burst during our peak times, and then burst to, you know, turn it off when we're not needing it so that we're paying for the computing power when we need it versus ha always having it on. Right, right. Yeah, the, the HP guys uh, on earlier were talking about the new Cloudburst product where they're actually going to roll hardware on site and you don't pay for it until you use it. Right. And to me, that was an interesting way to kind of bridge the, you know, the, the economics and design principles of cloud with the reality that not every customer is ready to move to the public cloud, right. either because their business, because of inertia, politics, whatever, or regulatory requirements say, hey, that's not, that's not right for me but we can kind of facilitate that type of cloud experience or discussion on site. Right, and, that, and that's what we would do. Um, it, it, do you guys really deliver it, it, as a service internally, right? You're, you, you externally have a, a software as a service to your right. clients. Your internal IT department, is, there, is, is the idea of chargeback and service catalogs a reality yet? Or is no, that we, we don't do chargebacks and service catalog at this point. It's is it something you want to get to or is that Maybe down the road, but right. not, it's not in the immediate future. All right, now that you're virtualized, right. you're where you need to be, right? right? Okay. All right, good. Well, guys, thank you very much. We appreciate thanks, you coming on. For uh, us. Yeah, it's a great case study and, and certainly a great experience moving to 90% virtualized and then beyond with, uh, with HP and Paycor. Okay, thank All you right. very much. Thanks very much. Thanks appreciate very much. It.